that's it. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Hey, what's up you guys? It's Judy here with My Life as Geek Guy. On this channel, I create videos on product reviews, makeup tutorials, and lifestyle advice with the aim to entertain, educate, and enrich the lives of others. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you join my Geek Guy family. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a, kind of like a get ready with me because I do have some things to do and I want to film another few videos after this. But I had the idea of filming this video with this eyeshadow palette. I know this one's probably already been out for about a year or so. This one is the Natasha Denona Sunset Palette. I haven't actually really used this before. I probably really only used it once on my channel. I was thinking I would make a sort of chatty get ready with me video, but at the same time a video where I could actually use this super uber expensive eyeshadow palette and actually put my money to some good use and maybe have a chat if something comes to my mind to chat about and let's not discuss this mess that's going on. I know I usually film my intros when I already have my makeup look done, but you know. Uh, it's my channel, I can film my videos how I want, or I want to change it up a bit and do something different, and yeah, let's, let's, let's get ready with me. 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 let us get my skincare so badly for the last few weeks but I just feel a little bit more dry than usual and the only thing I've really been putting on my skin is coconut oil thanks coconut oil for the win it's a lifesaver I'm gonna just start with my eyes as usual I'm thinking maybe I want to do a look that is somewhat dramatic and bold and colorful I know these are fall colors and it's spring going into summer here in Australia at the moment but I thought hell why not I know a lot of my videos are makeup looks but I guess that's that's what that's that's what I want to do see the thing is when there's so many no. brand new makeup products coming up on the market and they're not actually products getting sent to you as a youtuber you can't really keep up showing the newest and the latest things I'm gonna do my makeup while I'm talking because right now I would just love really love to make a video for you guys showing you the newest and the latest holiday sets that are coming out but you know I, I'm not rich not everybody has hundreds of dollars to spend on the newest and the latest makeup release coming out and let's be real I mean there are so many new things coming out it seems almost every single week that if you kept up with the new releases to try and share them on your channel if I tried to do that I wouldn't be able to eat or pay my rent or live my life so <laughs> I'm just going to be like FTW and use an eyeshadow palette that's been out already for a year and use it because I spent my money on it you know and it would be silly not to they do have shade names on this little plastic thing I don't think anyone really cares what the shade name is so I'm just gonna go into this one and apply that in my transition kind of wanted to do a little bit of a chatty video with you guys but honestly I don't know really what to chat about but my last video that I just put up at the time of filming this video is my homeschooling experience growing up and if you guys haven't seen that video and it sounds like something you might want to watch definitely go watch that one it was a long one I wasn't sure what kind of response I was going to receive after posting that video I know that a lot of people that we knew as kids growing up will probably watch that video because our childhood was always so obscure and undiscussed among family friends when we did actually have a chance to see them once a year <laughs> at the recording of this video right now it's been up for a few hours now and so far I have received some positive comments other than my own mother's response I mean it wasn't negative my mom's response it was just weird yeah that's all I'm gonna say about that <laughs> I'm gonna zoom you guys in a little bit closer you can actually see how beautifully that color is blending out like I that's that doesn't take any effort at all I don't know why I just never use this palette I think it's because it's so expensive that I don't want to ruin it which sounds kind of silly I know like I mean do eyeshadows go bad because <laughs> if that's the case I have a lot of bad eyeshadows in my collection right now I don't know what else to chat about with you guys like my life is pretty boring right now I'm working a fairly newish job like I guess that's news in my life so yeah I'm really enjoying that and also 
I'm really good at it. Does is that is that proud to say? I'm really good at what I do. But at the same time, I, I do recognize that there is always room for improvement. There is always something that you could do better. The second that you stop learning is the second that you are the worst version of yourself possible. That sounds harsh, but I believe it's true. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what makeup look I'm going for here. I'm just trying to use as many of these shades on my eyeballs as possible. We'll see what look I come up with. Also, when I'm doing my makeup, I'm trying to not raise my eyebrows so much because I've noticed that I'm starting to get wrinkles here. <laughs> These are wrinkles that just appeared, guys. I like I never had wrinkles until just recently, and I feel like it's because when I'm I'm doing my makeup, I lift my eyebrows like this to try and maximize the eyelid space that I'm trying to get at, but I should stop doing that because it, re it really doesn't help look. Like I still have the same space. Actually, it does help, actually. It does help the makeup application, but I'm gonna have to find some way to apply makeup without making wrinkles on my face. Now I'm going to go in with the same brush because I'm lazy and I don't wanna clean it into these two here and apply that on the outer corner of my eye. Actually, you guys, you know what? I can do a Q&A. Because the last time I did a chatty get ready with me, it was when I was getting ready to go away on our weekend getaway for our first wedding anniversary. I said to you guys watching, I said, leave questions in the comments down below. So I actually got a decent amount of questions. So I'm gonna actually answer those questions in today's video. I just figured out what the title for this video was, Q&A. <laughs> it's gonna be the freaking longest title ever. Natasha Yudana, Sunset Palette Makeup Tutorial Q&A, Halo Eye. Chit chat, get ready with me. <laughs> okay, so the first question was from Zeal. She's asking me, what's your favorite makeup product? There are so many makeup products on the market and so many good things. So I'm gonna narrow the question down to what's your favorite makeup item? I'm just going to say foundation because foundation covers up everything. <laughs> Well, not everything, most things. Like if you wanted to do just a really easy makeup look and just like slap something on and get out the door, I would do foundation and bronzer and that's probably it. Maybe not favorite, but the, probably the most practical makeup product. But as far as favorite goes, regardless of practicality, I'd probably go lipstick. I, I love lipstick. <laughs> Also, I'm not gonna keep on talking through what I'm doing here. I'm just essentially gonna try and use every single eyeshadow in this palette on my eyeballs, okay? The next question that Zeal asks me, what are your worst and best makeup looks that you've ever done? Probably the worst makeup look that I've ever done was one that I filmed earlier this week. I just wasn't feeling myself that day. It was hot, I was bothered. I was going through some shit that day and I had to film something to get ready for my Christmas series. I don't know if it showed in the video, it probably did. It was a very ratchet look and I have a feeling that the video will already be up by the time I post this video. So it was the video of my Christmas elf makeup look, like the happy elf and the overworked tired elf. Uh, that's honestly probably the worst, most ratchet makeup look that I have ever done, ever, in my life, on and off camera. <laughs> But I actually had more fun editing the video than I did filming it because I just wasn't feeling myself that day. The best makeup look I've ever done, I'm gonna say as far as glam goes, my most favorite makeup look to do is the super black smoky eye with the glitter and a bright red lip. I'm gonna leave a photo of that right here, of that sort of look because that's my most favorite look in the world to do. I just feel really sexy and glam and beautiful when I do that sort of look. And as far as SFX go, the best makeup look that I've done in SFX is probably my Grand Theft Auto Online Halloween face paint video. I will also leave that video linked up here and in the description box down below. Um, Mariana Reyes Morales asks me, what is your favorite video you've made? What inspired you to become a YouTuber? What's your age and how many siblings do you have? Man, that's a lot of questions. What's your favorite video that you've made? Probably my favorite video that I've ever made would be the one that I have received the most views on, if that makes any sense. I feel it's the most successful video on my channel and that's my cat Halloween makeup video. It was actually so fun to make. I really enjoyed making it, but not only that, it 
blew up on my channel actually. It's probably the one video that my channel analytics is reading because that one reached 3,300 views while all the rest of my other videos were like 200, 160 views. <laughs> That's probably my favorite video to date that I've made. What inspired me to become a YouTuber? That's actually a really loaded question. There are so many answers to that question. First of all, the first shallow reason that I wanted to become a YouTuber is the free makeup. But I do know and understand that that's not even gonna happen anywhere, anytime, remotely soon when you're such a small influencer like myself. But besides that, what inspired me to become a YouTuber is I've always wanted to make videos. I always thought that making videos would be so much fun and I would have a creative outlet and I would be able to help and inspire and maybe even help change lives somehow. Like if you could even change lives through makeup or even just by being my authentic self on video and finding a, a group or, an, or a niche of people who sort of relate to me, I kind of want that connection. That's what inspires me and it's the encouraging comments from all of you guys that inspire me every day to keep going. What actually inspired me to make that first video to get back on YouTube was actually another YouTuber. Her name is Jordan Chan. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce her last name. But in her video, I'm gonna leave that video linked down below, but in her video, she was talking about how you can achieve anything you want. What's stopping you? What is honestly stopping you from achieving anything and everything that you want? What is it? What's stopping you? And that kind of spoke to me because I'd always wanted to make videos. It was something that was never really far away from my mind to do. But then I watched that video and I was like, I've got to do this because it sounds like fun. It's something I've always wanted to do. And I think I can actually make it on YouTube. I know that's a massive statement, but I believe in myself, guys. I can do this. I can do anything that I set my mind to do. And if it doesn't work, at least I tried, you know? At least I tried and had fun in the process. Another thing that's inspired me to become a YouTuber or just to make videos, like I don't know if I can call myself a YouTuber, but <laughs> another thing that's inspired me to make videos is the fact that one day I want kids. In this day and age that we live in right now, a single income household is extremely, extremely hard to manage. If you're gonna have a life and have kids, then most times you need a dual income. Kudos to the families who have a single income, a stay-at-home mom or dad, and one of the parents work. Kudos to those families, because like, if you do that, if you have done that, I want to know how you made it, because that's hard. Anyway, my point is, I want to have something that I'll be able to do as a job from home when I have kids, so that we don't have to rely on a single income. Does that make sense? That's, that sounds very, like a very harsh reality, but I'm very much a realist. I'm very much a practical person. And so that's the practical side of what has inspired me to become a YouTuber, basically. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. What's my age? That's literally one of the questions that Mariana Reyes Morales asked me. Um, I don't know if I want to answer that, actually. How many siblings do I have? I actually answered this in my homeschooling video, but if you guys didn't watch that and you really just want to know how many siblings I have without having to watch that 32 minute long video, I have six siblings. I'm one of seven kids from the same set of parents. Lentina Loom, if you guys haven't seen Lentina Loom's channel, you really need to go check her out. She's just so much fun and life and joy and sunshine and I watch her when I'm feeling sad because I just, I just, I love her. <laughs> I love her content. I'm gonna zoom you guys out a bit because this is feeling too close and personal. Lentina Loom asks me, do you still dance? Yes, I still dance. Not really training professionally in ballroom because it just got to be too much. I was getting too old, I was getting too tired. I had a lot going on in my personal life and my career life. I knew that I wanted to do YouTube at some point. I had to give up something in my life so that I wouldn't be constantly run off my feet. And so dancing was that one thing because my dance partner and I would train four or five hours every single week. And it was just getting to be too much. The pressure was a lot. The ballroom dancing scene here, here in Australia is incredibly bitchy. Like if any dancing person is watching this and you're offended, like I'm sorry. If anyone has been in the ballroom dancing scene at all, then you know what I'm talking about. People are, are bitches, man. <laughs> 
So I needed to get out of that headspace. It just wasn't working for me anymore and I wasn't enjoying it like I used to. So I don't dance ballroom and train, but I still do dance socially. Lentina also asks, when you say you work in hospitality, what does that mean? Hospitality is an industry. The term hospitality is like nursing or engineering or retail. Hospitality is basically someone who works as a waitress or a waiter or a chef or tourism front of house receptionist. That, that's basically what hospitality is. <laughs> Andra Anthony asks me, as a new beauty YouTuber, I'm wondering what you do to market your channel. For one, I use my Instagram. I try and point everybody back to my YouTube channel. To be completely honest, Andra, it's actually really a lot of hard work. Marketing your YouTube channel isn't just talking about it, uploading a video and hope people watch. It also comes down to the research that you do for your videos. It comes down to the, how you tag and title and thumbnail your videos. It comes down to a whole lot of things. The baseline of what it comes down to is a lot of hard work. What people watch on YouTube is the end result. What they don't realize is all the behind the scenes grunt work of researching for your video title, for filming, editing, uploading, optimizing, tagging, and then researching your competition. And it's just so much. It's a lot. So as far as marketing goes, I don't really market my channel because when it's so small, what is there to market? So what I'm doing is building my fan base skills, filming, editing experience, and then maybe by the time I'm big enough, then I can market my channel. Because if I don't have anything there for people to watch, what have I got to offer? What am I marketing? Marketing to people. So I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense? If you need help on your YouTube channel or you need a bit of motivation or even basic step-by-step -step instructions or a bit of an idea on how to film your videos, then go to Video Influencers and Think Media, Sean Cannell and Benji Travis's YouTube channels. They have been really an integral part of my growth, basically, because I had no idea what to do, how to film, how to figure out what to film. Just go check out their YouTube channels because it is such a wealth of information and education for anybody starting out on YouTube. I swear, it will change your YouTube game because it helped me so, so much. Um, I hope that answers your question, Andra. <laughs> how do you get your name out there? Like I said, getting my name out there is really just a lot of hard work making videos, putting them out there, optimizing them. But then another way to let people know that you exist in this whole pool of millions of people on YouTube is to comment on other people's videos. Even if no one thumbs up your comment or replies to it, there are people scrolling through comments who will see your comment. If you leave a comment like, love this, People are probably, chances are, just gonna scroll past that comment. But if you watch that person's video in full and comment as you go along, then people will see this whole paragraph of a comment and then they'll be like, oh, this person actually invested in watching this video and they actually have something to say. Chances are if your comment is positive, encouraging, loving, they will click on your channel they might even engage with you on your videos, they might even subscribe. So like I said, it's a lot of hard work, but you actually have to be yourself on other people's videos and comment on other people's videos and watch them to let people know that you're around and that you care. I saw tips like this when I was starting out and I need to finish, I need to wrap this up, I need to finish this look. I saw tips like this on YouTube when I first started out, like I was Googling how to have people discover you on YouTube and it's like comments like, oh, just, you know, comment, be real, be genuine on other people's videos and I didn't think much of it until I actually started to do it and see other people do it and saw results from it. So yeah, comment on other people's videos, watch other people's videos, leave a comment that lets people know you actually watched their video and somehow related to the content that they were putting out. I really hope that helps you, Andra, in your YouTube journey. I know you're just starting out on your YouTube channel as well, so I really hope that that helps you. Definitely go check out Video Influences and Think Media because they have been such a huge part in me being encouraged and motivated to keep on going on YouTube. Any other questions? Yes, Liz Ku Quicho. Quico. <laughs> Liz actually messaged me and said this is how you say my last name and I've already forgotten. So Liz Quico. Quico. Sorry Liz. <laughs> Liz asks me, do you want a baby girl or boy and how many children do you want to have? Um honestly I would love to have boys. I feel like girls are just too hard and complicated to 
figure out. Um, and how many children do you want to have? I want to have a max of three kids, but I would be super incredibly happy with one right now and see how we go. Okay, yeah, I think that's all of the questions that I got on my video and I still have not finished this makeup look. And I really need to wrap this video up because I got another two to film after this. <laughs> so I'm gonna quickly do my foundation, concealer, everything else. I don't know, do you guys like watching people put on their foundation? I kind of feel like I already know the answer to that, like who cares? That's why I always skip through the foundation part of my video and just focus on the eye look. I'm going to go in with the Mecca Cosmetica Smoothing Primer and the Hydrating Primer because Tati is my role model and having less than two primers is unheard of. <laughs> what shows have you guys been watching on Netflix? Like, I actually live a really pretty busy life. I actually work full time and YouTube is a lot of hard work and takes up a lot of hours in my day, but I actually have managed to find some time to watch Netflix and I am watching Lucifer at the moment. The third season has just come out here on Netflix Australia. It's probably already been out in the US for a whole year, but Australia gets the back end of things when it comes to releases. Not just makeup, Netflix too. The third season of Lucifer has just come out. I'm actually really enjoying it. It's probably a really scandalous show to watch considering my religious background, but I'm actually really enjoying it. So, sue me. <laughs> Do you guys watch Lucifer? Because if you do, tell me, are you just as frustrated as me when it comes to Lucifer not really telling... Oh, by the way, spoiler alert! Lucifer not telling the detective what he really wants. I wish he would just say it. Tell her how he feels. I'm not quite finished with season 3 yet, but I wish a scene would come where Chloe says to Lucifer, Tell me, what do you truly desire? And then Lucifer would tell her. Like, I haven't even finished season 3 yet, but if that actually happened, and his stint that he does on other people works on him too, it would be so funny. Like I was saying before about wrinkles on my forehead, I'm discovering a whole lot more wrinkles under my eyes as well. I think that's why I have become such a huge fan of skincare, because if my skin looks shitty, then my makeup does too. Concealer, same old, same old, a Maybelline Age Rewind, what's new? I have not even tried the Tarte Shape Tape yet. I don't know, I just can't spend $30 on one little item like this when my Maybelline Age Rewind works so well. I say that and then here I am using 150 Australian dollar palette. So by the time this video is up, all the Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales will have been and done. So guys, tell me what you bought. Tell me what you bought. I've actually been saving up for these sales for a while <laughs> because it is my birthday month. I know I'm gonna justify in my head buying all this makeup because it is my birthday. It sounds ridiculous, but that's just how girls' brains work. You know, guys, get used to it. <laughs> I've actually been saving up money to spoil myself on my birthday because I f***ing deserve it. Also, I am utilizing a Rob Beauty Christy trick. She was talking about how big the eye bags under her eyes are, so she just blows out her eyeshadow really, really low to try and cover up those eye bags, and I'm gonna do that too because I've got some pretty intense, tired eye bags going on under there, so I'm gonna do that. You know something that I've kind of actually realized here on YouTube is that people want to be entertained. And if you can be educated while being entertained, then sure. But if you put a poll up here, like the Instagram polls, would you rather be entertained or educated? When it comes to makeup tutorials or beauty videos, people would much rather be entertained. I mean, look at YouTubers like Antonia Garza. Like, she doesn't even do makeup tutorials per se, and yet people resonate with her videos so incredibly much. She gets millions of views, She's only been on YouTube for seven months and she's got two million subscribers. I know a lot of work goes into making every single video, but she's there making these videos, having fun, like it's not even a, a production, it's something she's recorded on her phone. And like, this is no shade to anybody, but I feel like I'm here busting my ass, trying to film good educational videos, edit them, put them up, and just give some sort of benefit to people watching. 
And when really at the end of the day, I feel like all people want is to be entertained. That's fair enough. I enjoy watching entertaining videos. Like I would rather watch a Try Guy video over one of my own makeup tutorials. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like, is that ridiculous? Does anybody understand what I'm trying to say here? It's just sometimes it's probably just a little bit discouraging when I realize that people don't actually want to watch makeup tutorial videos and they just want to be entertained. There are so many new up and coming high school YouTubers. It's so it's so incredible actually like Joanne Sedia, I think that's what her name is. Emma Chamberlain, Antonia Garza. It seems like these people became YouTube sensations overnight. Here I am busting my ass, <laughs> trying to make it to a thousand subscribers. While I'm incredibly thankful for the 285 subscribers that I have right now, I'm so thankful for you guys. It makes me wonder what I'm doing wrong. Like I watch my analytics and probably 85% of the people that watch me are unsubscribed and my subscriber watch count is like way down there. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what am I doing wrong? Like what is it that people want to see? Because I want to make those videos that people want to watch. Like am I, what am I doing wrong? What is it that I'm doing that doesn't make people want to hit the subscribe button? That's what I'm wondering. I'm not complaining. This is just my thoughts that I'm putting out on the internet that I'm laying out to you guys because I want to be 100% real and honest. I'm just kind of almost begging my viewers to tell me what they want to see. Even now, like I know that, that me saying this already so late in the video, probably by now, only 11% of people will still be watching this and probably out of the 11% of people watching this, there's a 0.01% chance of people actually responding to my question, what do people want to watch? And replying that in the comments below. So, you know, it's, it's so much hard work. I don't know what I'm doing. That's it. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but I'm doing my best and I'm working hard and I'm trying. I'm really, really trying. I'm gonna stop fiddling with the eyes because I think that's as good as it's gonna get. I didn't end up using every single shade on my eyes. I think this one I didn't end up using. Um, but everything else I think I did. It's actually a really, really good palette. The colors blend together so beautifully, but they're actually not as vibrant as I thought they were gonna be. Under my eyes have gotten a little bit out of hand, but I'm kind of enjoying that lower lash line blend. You can call it blend, you can call it fallout. Either way, I kind of like it. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to I'm just going to get on with this video, finish it up, do my bronzer and liner mascara. I'm going to do that off camera because otherwise I'm going to keep on chatting about a whole heap of nothingness. Um I'll be right back. <laughs> it never ceases to amaze me at how much liner and lashes, well not lashes, but mascara can in change an entire look. Like I haven't even put highlighter or lips on yet, but I'm actually already loving how this looks coming out. I've got a bit of blush on as well. I'm just, I just use a really super old Rimmel blush that I have that I don't even know what it is anymore because the label's all rubbed off. It's that old. I probably should throw it out actually. <laughs> um, but I'm going in with a little bit of the Wet n Wild Shimmer Palette in the shade To Reflect. I used a bit of that brown eyeshadow in the palette in my brows as well just because I wanted a little bit of something something in there. It's not really blinding. You can see it on camera because of my ring light is reflecting right on it but in real life it's just coming off this more of a bit of a sheen oh my lips are ratchet right now okay yeah finally i'm using a highlighter that's not my maybelline master chrome i mean look at this look at this when was the last time you hit pan on something this one is majorly majorly hit pan <laughs> and for lips i'm just gonna go in with a combination of the ofra cosmetics long-lasting liquid lipstick in the shade Havana Nights. This one is the shade created by Kathleen Light in collaboration with Ofra Cosmetics. And over in the center of that, I'm going to use my Juvia's Place Matte Liquid Lipstick in the shade Soil. And as Christine from Simply Neological says, now comes the time for the awkward narcissistic montage.
Okay, so I guess that's it for this video, guys. This look didn't actually come out too bad for uh, for someone who didn't know what they were doing when they first started. <laughs> oh, shit. Do I have to film all of that again? No. Nah. Nah. Yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe before you leave if you haven't already. I put new videos out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So turn on the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of my future uploads. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for your time and for being here. And I hope you guys enjoyed this sort of chit-chat. Random, get ready, all over the place, nothing, everything video. So yeah, I'll see you in my next one. Bye. World come to an end. Oh, there we go. <laughs> buying all these money. Uh, buying all this money. <laughs> I actually forgot what I was talking about. What was I talking about? Fuck. <laughs> uh, I'm losing the plot. I have finally lost my mind. Great. <laughs>